And it just so happens that the opioid epidemic correlated to our time in Afghanistan. We've even got information about aliens that doesn't sound so cooked up anymore. There's a lot going on these days. So I've been busy trying to sort fact from fiction over on TikTok. I started a channel two months ago. A lot of people want to know what the heck's going on because we're at almost a million followers in two months. And I was tracking the number of followers I had and apparently a lot of us have some questions. Questions about dudes like this, questions for dudes like this. And I don't know about you, but I don't want an answer like this. I'm sick of getting answers like this. I want answers like this and answers like this with data. I want some answers that I can cross check with my own research of information that's actually sourced Please and thank you. Because if you're trying to tell me the reptilians own the world, um, I'm going to have to see some documentation. And you know, fair game, right? And I'm not trying to say everyone's making shit up. Like, we got a lot of government officials telling us that UFOs are real these days. But I would like to know the real evidence, please. Why are we arguing about this when we should be talking about the fact that the CIA does this to us and can we please stop getting called crazy for asking legitimate questions that any five-year-old would ask when they see this stuff it is 2023 and i would love some real evidence to support the claims that people are making about the world and not just trust the experts experts in science should be citing real information right don't worry we're not going to talk about the whole thing that just happened for the last three years everyone is way too pissed off about that in every direction y'all can make your own conclusions and draw your own opinions when it comes to those major political things because this space right here is not about being partisan this investigation is not about right versus left it's about right versus wrong and there are some very wrong things going on in the world today that we need to talk about problems that affect us here at home our families our loved ones our friends problems that we might be getting lied to about and misled about for the gain of i don't know military contractors pharmaceutical companies media outlets banks i mean could we please stop making things like this partisan and have a legitimate discussion about the way that giant mega corporations are destroying our way of life for their profits. I mean, if you were alive back in 2001, you probably weren't told that these guys actually outlaw this stuff and they burn all the fields and cut its production by like 90% when they're in charge of that country. And we went over there to fix this thing down here. Um, and somehow we wound up fixing this thing right here. Um, I'm not saying it was intentional, allegedly. This is, all, this is all just for entertainment purposes, YouTube. I'm not saying this is fact. I'm just presenting a bunch of made up information that are sourced from government databases. I'm not implying intent. I'm not accusing anyone of any crimes. All that I'm saying is that it's about time that we had an intelligent discussion as adults about what the heck is going on and we stopped calling each other far-right extremists and left-wing snowflakes and just got together in the middle and simmered down a little bit and talked about it so you ready we calm we collected we ready to talk about it you ready to talk about it you ready to talk about it let's roll that intro baby conspiracy theories are information is the oxygen of the democracy. All right, you ready for this? A lot of you are new here. A lot of you have been here, but we're starting a new series. This episode, we're going to run through how we got here. Bit of an intro, bit of a catch up for people that haven't been following along on TikTok. And if you're newer on the TikTok, you haven't been there since the beginning, like most of you. Most of you are from Shampoo. I see you. I know what you're up to. You came for the Shampoo videos. We're going to rewind a little bit and show you where we started. So you're caught up on all the things we've learned that got us to here. Because this YouTube channel is started for a very specific reason. And that reason, we'll get to that. <laughs> you thought I was going to just give it away. Uh-uh, we'll get to that in a minute. You ready to do this? You ready to get learnt? So if you're not familiar with what's going on, so if you're not familiar with what's going on around here, we started a TikTok channel about two months ago and we started right here. And I was just here trying to do some research, trying to figure out who owns the media, who owns 
food and big pharma and the military industrial complex. And I started out tracking my progress um, back in May when we started. And apparently, we all want to know what the hell's going on these days. So a lot of you are probably these guys who heard about me through some shampoo video. And we are not here to talk about shampoo. If you want to know about shampoo and how it's making your hair fall out, you can go over to the other site and watch them clock videos. And we'll talk about it over there. This YouTube channel has been started for one very specific reason. And I'll give you one hint. You got it? This is not a show about credentials. And if you're coming here expecting some PhD expert to tell you with authority how the world works, uh, you can go over to CNBC where they got their experts on their shows. This show is about doing your own research and about trying to uncover the truth. And if you don't already realize why it's important that we figure out the truth together instead of relying on the mainstream media to tell us the truth, then let me explain. Here's where we all started um, with the news. And you might be thinking, huh, Comcast, that's not the news, is it? Well, actually, if you watch MSNBC, CNBC, NBC, any of that conglomerate, that's owned by Comcast. And Comcast is a publicly traded corporation. And their top shareholders are Vanguard and BlackRock. Um, and, you know, other gigantic private money um, management. Oh, yeah, but Ian, I watch Fox. I watch CNN. So, you see, this all started when we realized that all of the news in America is owned by these six companies. And what do these six companies have in common? Well, I highlighted in red how their top shareholders are almost always Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street, gigantic money management firms that we invest our money in, but they vote the shares in their corporate interests. And they, it turns out that they own basically everything in the market. Um, you know, just ahead of people like JP Morgan Chase, Capital World Investment Group, a bunch of big money that does not represent our interests at all. Did the same digging into banks. Turns out that all the big banks all own each other. It's a bunch of circular ownership. But obviously it doesn't stop with banks because they own all the biggest defense contractors in the country. And by defense contractors, let's be clear. We're talking about people that make bombs and planes and guns and munitions. Oh yeah, and the same money also owns all the construction companies that go and rebuild places after they bomb them. Oh, and they also own the energy companies that give the energy for those wars and for all of us to live. Oh wait, I'm green, I'm green, I'm, I'm green, baby. I don't, I don't buy into that. Big money's green too, baby. Top shareholders and all these like First Solar, Tesla, what are you gonna do? The more I looked into all these different industries and looked into all the different companies that are at the top of each industry, the more I realized that the same big money controls most of the market. Each one of these little squares, rectangles, is a different company. And each one, you can't see at this scale, but they're all highlighted in red that the top three shareholders is all BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Berkshire Hathaway, Capital Work Research Investments, Dodge and Cox, like we know these guys real well by now. We obviously did Big Pharma too, Big Tech, Food and Beverage, Airlines. They even own the hospice, funeral, and cemetery industry. I mean, come on. Eventually I said, screw it. And I learned how to become a data analyst and imported all the data from the top 100 companies in the stock market to find out just how much of the market all of these companies own. And it turns out that when you add up Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street, this is the percent of the capital that they own of the top 100 companies in the market. And some quick math here, eight plus 14 is 22, 22 plus 17 is 39% plus these points makes about 40% of the top 100 companies are owned by just three management firms. That's almost half. We're not even gonna go into the metric I made up to figure out how much voting rights each of these firms control, cause dang! Talking about companies like Apple and Microsoft and Amazon, like Exxon Mobil and Halliburton. We're talking about companies that you've never even heard of that make things like the microchips in the bombs and the trackers in your cell phone. They own all of that. And it just kept feeling like all roads led back to BlackRock, but, there's more to the story. Cause you see, the thing is that BlackRock wasn't founded until like the eighties. Larry Fink is a new guy on the scene and banks like JP Morgan have been around since, you know, like 1900, give or take. Like 
banking as an institution predates America and started in Europe hundreds of years ago. And by the time America was even founded, the Bank of England was a global superpower controlling the whole world through shadow business banking bullshit. And so even though BlackRock gets lots of views on virality apps like TikTok, there's no way that BlackRock is actually controlling the world. There's no way that BlackRock is actually the deep dark villain at the end of the train, especially because it's so easy to find information on BlackRock these days. It's almost like BlackRock is being dangled out in front of us so that we pay attention to BlackRock and don't look behind the curtain. And that's because every time we looked behind the curtain, we seem to find, you know, examples of how large banking institutions like the Federal Reserve and global banks were devaluing our own labor and our currency that represents our labor and time to the point where now, what the hell is this? A hundred dollars in the year that the Federal Reserve was founded in order to stabilize the currency has become, is that even a value anymore? Like, what is that? A dollar? 45 cents? Excuse me? P.S. If you want like real legitimate sources from which that infographic was sourced from, this is Fred. Fred is, I know Fred sounds like a dude, but Fred is actually like the official government website that tracks all these metrics. And you can see the exact same thing, $100 from the year that the Federal Reserve was founded, 1913, and then it devalues down to blank, you know, whatever the hell that is with uh, inflation. Let me remind you, the point of the Federal Reserve was to stabilize the currency and to stop things like bank runs, bank crashes, monetary failure, volatility. That was the whole stated goal of the Fed. Literally the first thing the Fed did was steal a bunch of value from the American people. But it wasn't just the Federal Reserve and the big banks that we found behind the curtain every time we looked. Because there's an awful lot of other people and corporations mainly that are benefiting from the current structure of our world. Do you have any idea how much money is in this photo right now? Let me remind you that the contracts that companies like Lockheed Martin or Raytheon, just to name a few, the contracts that these defense contractors get come from government money. They're not out there at like the mall selling cell phone cases to make money with which to build these fighter jets. They're getting paid by the government to build these fighter jets, which, you know, that's cool. We got to defend everybody. We got to defend our borders and all. No big deal. But like, how many borders do we got to defend? You know, like, I dare you to guess how much money is in this photo. And I, I don't know, like, I ain't got the answer to that or nothing. You can do your, you can do your own research on that. That's not the point. Because the thing is, Behind the curtain, we found more than just a giant military industrial complex just chomping away at all of our produced value that we pay in taxes that we did not vote for. Yes, let me remind you that these dollars are produced by us when we work with our time to produce money to feed our families. Then we have to pay that to our government, which is doing this shit with it. But wait. Cause there's more. But the thing is that all along while we were doing this research, something kept coming up over and over and over. No matter what topic I was looking into, no matter what we were learning, no matter how many legitimate government sources, official documents, very qualified facts we were sourcing, we inevitably ran into the same problem. Is right now there is a hunger amongst the people, amongst the populace, to know what's going on. Everybody wants to feel like we can find the real truth. And we all know that we're being lied to by mainstream media and politicians and paid off experts. And everyone's tuning in to try to figure out what's really going on. But the problem is that there just seems to be no end to corporations or other strange shady interests promoting, pushing, and subscribing to conspiracy theories. It's all just a bunch of conspiracy theories, goddammit. How did we end up here? I was not trying to talk about this thing. I, no. I was trying to cite real facts about this guy who really was running a international, the thing that we can't say ring 
Uh, and he was definitely working with at least one international intelligence agency, getting blackmail on a lot of famous and powerful people. We know this by now. And I don't know if you believe in this thing or not. Um, I'm not stressed if you do or don't. I don't, we'll look into that another time. But isn't it a little weird that this conspiracy theory about a global Schmetta-Schmile ring just happens to gain prominence like a year or two before the real thing gets found out and arrested and then does totally not unalive himself in prison? Except isn't it weird that this one includes things like satanic like ritual worship and like eating of flesh and a bunch of like things like lizard people are like I don't know what like suddenly Trump is the messiah like I'm not trying to hate on Trump whatever you believe what you want I'm not I'm not stressed about that I'm just saying like isn't it kind of sus that we have an HBO original documentary making big bucks about to come out off of this exact conspiracy theory and that's just the tip of the iceberg we got the Illuminati popping up everywhere. I mean, apparently Beyonce's even making Illuminati hand gestures at concerts just because she made a triangle. That's not to mention that we got lizard people. We got aliens, which we legitimately need to talk about because that's not necessarily a conspiracy theory anymore. We got hollow earth, got flat earth. Like homie, at what point do we stop and ask why are there so many conspiracy theories these days? And yeah, it'd be real convenient to explain that by just saying like, oh, people will naturally come up with conspiracy theories and it's the age of the internet and everyone wants to make up a conspiracy and everyone just wants to believe. But when you actually look at real evidence of how this world works and you look into certain intelligence agencies, I got some shit to show you. And this is where we went from just running a TikTok channel to realizing that we needed to dive a little deeper. So it's time we talk about COINTELPRO. If you don't know what COINTELPRO is, um, here's a basic primer. This is a Wikipedia page. Yes, oh my gosh, it's Wikipedia. It's so dangerous. Trust me, it's sourced from congressional hearings legitimate documents, you can look this up yourself. Back in the 70s, there were two hearings. One was called the Church Committee and one was called the, uh, Dwight Committee? What was it called? One was called the Church Committee and one was called the Pike Committee. Look them up, they happened in 76. By the way, this is back when like politicians and the media actually did have some reputable and, uh, you know, integral people in them that actually did ask questions and get answers. And they discovered that the CIA primarily, but also the FBI, the NSA, all the three letter organizations in this country and beyond have all been engaging in what's called COINTELPRO, which is short for counterintelligence program. And that sounds normal, but what it actually turns into is things like infiltrating and undermining organizations like feminist organizations, Communist Party USA, Vietnam War protesters, Martin Luther King Jr., but also groups like, can I say that on YouTube? I don't know. Like groups with like, you know, the white pointy hats that don't like the people that are brown. You know, far right, like national uh, states rights parties. Um, they infiltrate all of them. They infiltrate, they engage in psychological warfare, they discredit, they undermine, they blackmail, they harass with false testimony, false imprisonment. They make um, made up documentaries that look very convincing in order to portray organizations in bad lights. They turn organizations against each other. They extremify, divide. They even compiled a whole tape of blackmail on Martin Luther King and then sent it to him with a letter trying to convince him to unalive himself. This is the letter. This is all publicly available information on Wikipedia. That was all committed by our own governmental organization, the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, our own government, obviously for our own benefit and safety though, right? Like obviously for the greater good. Behind me, you can see what's called the corruption perception index, keyword perception. So this is a measurement of how corrupt people think their own government is. And all that I'm seeing on this chart is the public deception index, as in, these countries and these countries 
are highly deceived about how corrupt their governments are, and at least these countries know that they're screwed. So it's time we clear this up. These scores are way too high for countries who we know very clearly did mind control experiments on their own citizens, which often resulted in psychosis and even death. Um, they infiltrated civil rights groups like Martin Luther King Jr. and the Black Panthers. They sprayed radioactive material on us. They did Operation Mockingbird in which they turned our own journalists against us. They started the Vietnam War based upon a false flag staged operation in the Gulf of Tonkin. Um, not too dissimilar in Kuwait where we had staged testimony. You can look these things up. And that was about the point where I started to get the feeling that maybe, just maybe, it would be beneficial to the powers that be to start and stoke and inflame a bunch of conspiracy theories that are pretty easily disprovable just to discredit the ones that aren't. Have you ever considered that we might be all living in one giant PSYOP COINTELPRO operation every day? I mean, how's a journalist gonna look into the legitimate facts about this problem when it's just gonna lead to them being accused of being one of these dudes? I'm out here trying to learn about the military industrial complex and why endless war is not a good thing. And I've got people in my TikTok comments being like, the deep state is a dog whistle for the far right groups. It's like, bro, dog whistle me that. Oh, it's just so frustrating. There's so much bullshit out there in this world. And really, it makes sense if you think about it. Because back in the day, during Vietnam and before, all media was controlled by newspapers, TV, and radio. And all of that was easy to tie up into a nice bundle and control behind the scenes with money. But not the internet, baby. These days, we have the power to share information amongst ourselves and to spread ideas to vast numbers of people. Now, when an important document gets declassified, they can't bury it in some little news report that no one's ever gonna read because we can all spread it amongst ourselves. And in a world like that, there's only really one way to control information. And it's pretty obvious when you think about it. The only way to control the narrative in this century is to pollute the narrative. And boy, has the narrative been polluted. So I decided to start a YouTube channel to unpollute that shit. It's based upon three primary realizations. Call it three dimensions of investigation, if you will. In order to understand money, you have to understand power. Power can be explained in this modern world in five sectors. The intelligence community, the international banking cartel, organized crime, the military industrial complex, and all the other corporations and corporatocracy in our world. You might say, oh, but government and politics. Yeah, let's be real. Government and politics is tight within that hand and they ain't getting out. The second dimension by which we need to investigate everything is that to learn the truth, you must understand distruth. In order to find what's really going on, we need to learn how to sift through all the lies, all the COINTELPRO, all the bullshit that is getting put in our way intentionally to obscure the truth. And lastly, the third dimension is time. In order to understand what's happening right now, I've realized that we need to understand what already happened and brought us to this moment. And so we're gonna investigate. We're gonna look at real evidence, try to find real sources, and give everything a fair shake with an open mind. If it seems to stand up, we'll consider it. If it seems to be disproven, we'll set it aside. Maybe think about it another time. We'll always remember that we can be wrong and we will most definitely be misled. Nobody's perfect, and I am not qualified. I am no expert. I'm just doing this because someone's gotta do it, and I'm someone. So I just wanna finish by saying thank you for being here. Thank you for having a level head and an open mind and coming here asking questions and trying to do the research with us. Um, if you've been here since the beginning at TikTok, I really appreciate you. If you came from one of those other social platforms and followed this channel, I appreciate you so much. Your support helps get this discussion out to other people um, and spread it far and wide because I think this is the most important stuff in the world today. I think that there is no more important thing for us to be discussing 
than to be trying to unpack the corruption that is covering up the real workings of what is going wrong with our world. And the fact of the matter is that without you guys, I wouldn't be here. Without you guys, I wouldn't have figured out nearly the amount of stuff that I've figured out so far. And I'm gonna need you more along the way, both to keep me honest and to keep me accountable, to give me pointers and leads, to correct me when I'm wrong. We're all doing this together. We're trying to decentralize the process of research so we all do the research because that's a lot better than trusting some news organization to do the research for us, right? So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for being here. I can't wait to get more of this going with you. And the fact that we're doing this together, I mean, I mean, come on. Love you, homies. Um, I'll see y'all next week. And if you want, you can follow me on those social channels where I'll be posting every day. That's all for me. My name's Ian. You're watching Cancel This Conspiracy. Never forget to follow the money. Seek the truth. Do your own research. Let's roll that outro. Conspiracy theories are dangerous. Information is the oxygen of the democracy. With Republicans, with progressives, with libertarians, because this is not about right and left, this is about right and wrong. It's so sick that we can't talk about it. It actually lifted up, and it could actually turn. I'm gonna ask you to look away. Legend has it that Christian Rosenkreutz drew his secret knowledge from the wisdom of the ancient Egyptians. They estimated a hundred yards from the left wing was this hundred foot disc. You begin to get into this uh, very scary scenario that has to do with the human condition of uh, the proclivity to accumulate vast amounts of power around a handful of people. And right now these misanthropic sociopaths are running the planet into the ground. Now I am become death. The destroyer of worlds. There's so much evidence out there that even if less than 1% is true, that would be enough to collapse the current paradigm and change the whole planet. Our security is at stake.